Talk about me stalling. The Boys Season 4, Episode 5. Why don't you just take... Hey, you remember what Simon <laughs> Pegg does with that dude and he just gets his heart out of his chest? Why don't you just do that to me, Eric Kripke? Why don't you just, why don't you just rip my heart out of my chest in that final beautiful moment between Huey and his... And by the way, you were wrong about his mom. I was. I was wrong. I kept waiting for it, something to yeah, happen with her. I was. I was thinking about that, too. I was like, damn. That would have been fun. No, it was not a bad no, theory. No, but I like that. It no, was a great theory. And I'm totally fine being wrong. Yeah. No, it was um, a great theory, though. I, I was I was actually, because your theory was so sound, I was expecting it to happen. Um, yeah. But uh, what a fucking crazy episode. Um, the vengeful God thing, the anal beads. <laughs> so uh, the, okay. Ashley the, getting revenge. Hold on a second. No, we're Hold going on. all no, in. Well, no, because I want to get into this because it, it <laughs> starts with um, them having some fun with this whole, it's the V52 oh, yeah. or oh, expo. By the way, so it's spot on fucking uh, so, criticism of the MCU, dude. But the, yeah, we'll get to spot that because I want to, I want I, to, I might have to pause for a second so I can pull up the list because there, there is a list of all the 13. F- of all the fake mo- like all the fake bot it's movies, been, it's been a year since I had a movie, so it's time for a reboot. But I think it's funny <laughs> on two levels, right? It's funny on two <laughs> levels because it's mocking <laughs> Marvel and Disney with the D twenty three Expo, but then it's also in the name making fun of DC and making fun of Batman with Tech Knight and stuff because yeah. it's the new fifty two. It's V fifty two, you know, like just little things like that. And um, yeah, I want to. I want to pull up all the movies because what's funny. I didn't is, get a chance. Yeah, I mean, dude, it just showed up. The real marketing quick. team for that show is fucking insane. They're so good at their jobs because they like because a lot of people use discussing film as a as like a source for movie news. So they got discussing film to put out tweets like they would for like a Marvel project of like a train into the multiverse is announced, you know, like, so I got to pull it up because it's fucking okay, awesome. While you're pulling up, uh, I just want to say um, hats off to Will Ferrell. Um, he was great in the Training one episode. a train? Oh he, my God. He was great in the one episode, right? But the preview that they showed was so, don't you fight me? Like, it was just, it was classic fucking Will Ferrell and it was just. The White Savior. So there's Classic. 43 Vought movies. Okay. That were um, announced. Announced. Because it just showed like this giant like. Oh my god. <laughs> Read them off. Let's hear them. So this is uh, Phase Seven. Okay. <laughs> seven through thirteen is yeah. what he said. So se- Phase Seven, Training A Train. Uh huh. Yeah. So this is the A Train origin story that we saw with Will Ferrell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my god. Firecracker, Lord Soldier. Oh god. Remember that? Which is fucking. <laughs> What do I do, Lord? Um, Become a fascist. <laughs> oh, fucking moron. Homelander, Land of the Free, Home <laughs> of the Saver. God. Uh, this will be the newest movie in Homelander's film series. His details on its content are slim, but it seems it is as patriotic as other movies. <laughs> the Deep, Secrets of Atlantis. This is a sequel centered around The Deep. And oh, By the way, this is a screen rant that I'm reading this from. Okay. Uh, this is a sequel centered around The Deep, and while the story is still unknown, uh, its title is a parody of Lost Kingdom. <laughs> the Seven Reborn. This is the next film in the Seven franchise, and while it hasn't been revealed what it's about, it could also follow the team as they are rebuilding <laughs> after Stormfront's Which is betrayal. exactly the kind of shit we get from in DC Dawn of the and Seven. fucking Marvel. Yeah. Like, we're not sure what Secret Wars and the, Kang this, Dynasty... Yeah, this is the uh, this is what uh, Tech Knight showed us at the expo. Yeah. The Tech Knight. <laughs> This is a sequel to another Tech Knight movie, and is the first. Was it called Tech Knight? Yeah, the yeah. No, well, it's the Tech Knight, like the Batman. Right, the new one is the Tech Knight, but yeah. was the old one Tech Knight? Yeah, I think so, probably. <laughs> Super School. That was yes. the one with Ryan. What happened to the kids from uh, fucking Gen V? I don't remember. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, we still got. We got. Hurry up. Just I'll just read the titles. Just, no, I'll no. Just, no, no, it'll be fast. I want to hear about just, all of them. No, I'll just read the titles. I want to hear about all of them. Because if I read I the... I love you. Stop. If I read the titles, <laughs> you'll get it. Like this one. Homelander v. Soldier Boy Annihilation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, the Deep Lifeguard Summer. <laughs> <laughs> A-Train Off the Tracks. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the sequel to Training A-Train. What? So. Obviously. In the same phase? Well, then in the third movie, he does... Uh, well, in the next phase, it's into the multiverse. So, so The Seven Returns. This is a sequel to The Seven Bo- Reborn. Uh, Firecracker, Heaven's Miracle. God. 
uh, the Tech Night Nightlight. <laughs> And then they show the teen team that was in the comics uh, and in this show, uh, Teenage Kicks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Home uh, Sage was on that. Home team. of Kwanzaa, too. Oh, my God. Home for Kwanzaa, too. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> G2 G-Men. Uh, so this is a sequel to G-Men. So there you go. Oh. Phase 9 is then double standard. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a... Uh, yeah, this is the... The Homelander centric movie that uh, I think it was about like his trial or something. Oh, okay. Homelander Justice Served. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's pretty on the nose. Black Noir Back to Hanoi 3. <laughs> the Deep Gods and Dolphins. A <laughs> Train into the Multiverse. Okay. The Seven Forever. God. Fire Firecracker. God Help Me. A Dark and Stormy Night with a K. So it's nice, Tech Night. Nice. Yeah. Teenage Kicks Ditch Day. G3 G Men. <laughs> <laughs> Firecracker, A Christmas Wish. Uh, like Silent that. Vengeance 3, Vengeance Reloaded. Um, so I think this is a Black Noir Christmas movie. Okay. Let There Be Night, with a K for Tech Night. Um. Uh, the Guardians of Godolkin, Flipped. That's the one we saw in the episode. Okay. Teenage Kicks, Sex Ed. Speedwalkers 2 Mall Race. <laughs> G Men Days Pass from the Future. <laughs> oh. oh my God. There's so many of these. Okay, Keep I, think that, them. All right, I think we're done here. This is the last bit. All of them? This is the last bit. I want to make sure we get all of them. The Curse of Fu Manchu. <laughs> A oh. 1953 film about the soup bomb site. So there you go. Oh. Crimson. This is about Crimson Countess. Huh. Uh, this means noir. Oh. It's a 1979 film about black noir. Oh my god. Whiskey Sunrise is a 1984 film about Soldier Boy, Gunpowder, and Crimson Countess. <laughs> I hate that. Some of these I kind of want to see. Red yeah. Thunder Two is nice. uh, about payback. Y2 Chaos, but it's Y2 K A O S. Okay. Um, <laughs> about Lamplighter, uh, Queen Maeve, Her Majesty, Rising Tide, Translucent, Invisible, Force 2, Dawn of the Seven, and then G-Man, World War Three. So these are the other ones that they've already sh- had in the in the series. Yeah. So like, this is just the level of all the VOT movies that we've heard about in this show and just like the new ones, my God. But the episode itself um, is, there's so many interest. it's, you're seeing a lot of the storylines kind of converge again. Um, the fact that we we're con- we're converging with the Gen V virus um, that we had known about. Now we're also seeing those two characters um, being featured at, at, with the Seven, and you know they're obviously being under Homelander's wing. And can we can we talk about the flying sheep? Well, yeah. So Jesus fucking Well, all Christ. of that. So like we, we and the chickens. They're on the hunt to find this virus, and and it turns out that Victoria was hiding it somewhere so she can try and reproduce it herself, because she just wants to kill all the soups and be like Queen Soup is really what it is. Like she's just as bad as Homelander. Oh fuck yeah. And and um, which is funny, which is why it is interesting that Homelander is trying to be friends with her because Homelander keeps trying to remind her, like, hey, we have like similar goals here. Yeah. We we were trying to we're both trying to say we're superior beings. But um, the that whole thing of like, so they follow it all the way to this secret location because they go and get uh, Stan. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, they, they they give him a present. Time for my pottery class. Well, Butcher comes up to him just uh, to MM, and he's like, "I need a tiny little presidential pardon <laughs> to get him out." And then yeah, so the whole deal is, hey, go get the virus because you would know where it is, where she would hide it. And then, yeah, we'll get you a presidential pardon. Yeah. And then they go to this secret fucking farm that he had. And then, yeah, we see throughout that there had been experiments on animals with this virus. And that's where Butcher lets that <laughs> rabbit free that was full of temp V. But Christ. yeah, so the big part of the episode is the flying fucking sheep because they're all juiced up on s- compound V. But the execution of it was even better because. Uh, even, well, I wanted to talk about when Victoria shows up. So she finds out they're there and everybody's nose is bleeding, mm. which is her just fucking with them, being like, you dumbasses. I could kill all of you so easily mm. and you keep pushing me, mm. you know? 
And she's a great actress. So really yeah, like they her. they all agree that like, hey, it's in all of our best interest to get the virus. So let's get the virus. Mm. Like, let's all figure this out. So in that agreement, they're going there, and then yeah, they see different souped up animals, and then they see this big fucking bull. And you're like, holy shit! Yeah. And then yeah, it gets killed by all these flying sheep. Which you know, is just I don't have insane. to be. I don't have to be first. I just have to be fastest and the slowest of you. Or what does yeah. he say? I just survival of the fittest. I just gotta be faster than yeah. I just gotta be faster you. than you. One of you. Yeah. Uh, but like the fact that yeah, you just see these flying. Who come up with like okay yeah, interesting idea enough that like we're, they're putting V in animals and yeah okay. Well, the chicken just bursts through the guy's fucking oh, chest. Oh yeah, they're the chicken coop <laughs> and he just <laughs> what the fuck yeah. <laughs> They're just like fucking souped up chickens. And they're like, yeah, they're running around. And this is fucking amazing. And it's like, again, what this show does just so well. A chicken and it's just because around. you have this wacky animal V adventure. Then you've got this ridiculous parody of of the uh, expos, you know, these corporate events yeah. for these 20,000 movies. And then you also have the disturbing Homelander shit. And it's all perfectly balanced because of how we have always set that tone of ridiculously gory and funny and over yeah, the top, yeah. and then also ridiculously gory and scary. Well, you see, and, you see, um, in the Homelander stuff, you see, you know, this character of the the director. What's his name? Derek. What? The guy with the glasses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Derek. Yeah, that's sleaze bag. He, he's yeah. been he's been in the series since the beginning, and you know whoever he's you want. Sleaze bag corporate director, right? But, yeah, but he's he's like he's the uh, director slash producer slash you know kind of just yeah sleazy entertainment guy. stereotype. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, it's it's good to see him get his comeuppance, but you know like you this. you right you. Mm. So so you see that Ryan is connecting with his humanity in a way that Homelander can't because he was raised different. But he's also toying and flirting with the idea of that he is, I can do whatever I want well, exa- and I can yeah, make yeah. you do whatever yeah. I so want. This, uh, so, so it's a fine line that he's that's, yeah, towing and, and this, Homelander's loving it. Yeah, because this is the moment where we're talking about the V52 stuff and they're talking about summer school and like, we're going to shoot it in a month or whatever. And Ryan is like, I don't know about this. I think this is kind of stupid. You know, like I don't, I don't get the point of it. Mm. And then Homelander for the first time is just giving him a choice. And he just says, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. You don't have to do it. I'm not making, he's like, really? We're going with it. Like even he is like, no, we shouldn't do that. Let him do it. Um, and then that whole conversation of like, of, of that whole, ordeal of like oh okay that's all it took they just took and then again it it just kind of shows you of how important it is for a kid of any age Mm -hmm. to have proper guidance because this whole time there's been friction between them because yeah ryan is is still raised as a human so he still he still uh has humanity in him whereas Homelander is actively pushing that humanity out of his body because in this very episode he's mm. still having flashbacks of his childhood and that the, what she says of like you still need to be loved you still need to be loved by we them. we 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 know that he's manipulative so we know that it's just another way to manipulate him yeah it's still but for his, Homelander his yeah. telling his telling Ryan that. You know, I've been manipulative of all my life because of this, and and I have been doing the same thing to you. Yes, is a manipulation in itself. Even though it's true, it yeah. is still used for selfish manipulative he's trying ways. To yes, because yeah. he's trying to get him to become to to get that understanding of we are gods. They are pe- they he are was, puny he was, peasants. To he us. was he was using They're the rod, than. and now he's using the open hand. You know, he's using the outstretched hand. You know the carrot instead of the stick, and and, and it's Ryan, working better for. He realizes that Ryan is going to work better with with honey than with vinegar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if he if he if because he makes if he if he somehow convinces Ryan that being a horrible horrible soup like he is, it was his choice all along. And he knows that's the way to do it. So that's why he's like, I'm giving you a choice yeah. while I'm fucking me- messing with your head. Yeah. You know, because and Ryan doesn't know it. Because Ryan's smart, dude. He's Hopefully he'll, but but he's but what I love about this show is he's still like this. There's two sides of this because Homelander is still human. Yeah, 
whether he likes it or not, he's still human. Yeah. Because he's emo- the, because the, any Ryan's emotion, the only natural born any, soup. Well, even even Homelander is human because any emotion that he is going to express makes him human. Yes. Because no other higher functioning intelligence wise can express emotion like humans can. Yeah. And understand emotion like humans yeah. can. So, and by the way, he all of you the, patting yourselves on the back, that ain't necessarily a good thing, you guys, all right? <laughs> Seriously. But yeah, and, and but even then, Ryan has that moment that's also very human of, yes, I have power and I want to exert it a little bit. Because I think, while this guy, what he did is wrong, I think the justice is you should beat the shit out of him. Yeah. That's not justice. No, 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 no. Because while no. that dude is a sleazebag, he doesn't deserve to be beaten. No. In fact, that's probably going to make him, I mean, I don't know. I, I always try to put myself in the other shoe, in the other shoes, and I'm trying to think if that would make me want to be more of a sleaze bag after that or less of one or just even and worse, like get more sociopathic because of it. And it's even worse because how playful Homelander is with it yeah, and how Ryan buys into it, and then you see in action once again a man who deserves to be treated poorly for his poor behavior. Right. But you're still seeing a man being beaten and this guy enjoying it, and you're seeing them say, look at my toys. Yes, yes. Look at my exactly. toys. He's, he's understanding in the best way that Homelander can show him. We're better which than them. Is, yes. And he, we own them. Yes. He gave him a little bit of a hint, and fucking Ryan who took fucking it and ran with it, Who fucking cares if they die? Who fucking Ryan cares? Ryan took it and ran with it. We're better. Who ma- and he cu- couched it to himself in, I'm helping this girl. Yeah. Which, yeah. You know what? Honestly, yeah. That guy deserves deserve, to get slapped that across guy the face once. once. And to be exposed for the predator that and he is. And lose his job. And lose his job. And that's and it. All clout. And be embarrassed right. for the horrible things he's done, and that's it. He doesn't deserve and to be beaten. And then start making appearances on Fox News, because they'll hire anybody. And so, yeah, even, t- again, par- or Vought paralleling, News. look at this. <laughs> but this is where it gets better, because this yeah. is where you're seeing Homelander's uh, influence on both sides of the coin, because now you're seeing the rest of the seven when he says, we are no longer yeah. celebrities. And that's we are wrathful gods. So before we get to that, can we talk about Ashley with the, because well, uh, no, it's part of the end. Though. Yeah, we, I think there's a way we can tie them both at the same time, because I think know. to parallel that, that beating at the beginning, the beating at the end is I just want to talk about the Bluetooth enabled anal beads. Is even that's all I want to talk is about. Even, is 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 great <laughs> because it is it is that moment of again now his message is getting further of like there's no it doesn't matter there's no punishment for us if they arrest us we'll kill them it doesn't matter and let's show them a little wrath let's show them that we're a god and so then just like earlier with the slapping from the assistant we're seeing him get this man being beaten alive and it turns out. To be the like Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity yeah. Cameron, something. Let's call him the Jesse Waters because Jesse Waters yeah, is yeah. an absolute fuck stain. Uh, yeah, I would what say more recently stain. Jesse Waters, but yeah, right wing. I'm gonna have my mom on this racist, misogynistic bullshit show. This is the yeah the Vought News Network show, but uh, so the reason he's in that situation is because we get a little bit more um, clarification on her relationship. Ashley's relationship with Cameron, where he's she's like, "What are you doing? Why aren't your anal beads?" Because they're in the ba- the green room of this expo, and she's like, "Why don't you have your Bluetooth enabled anal beads?" And he's like, "Do you want me to come on?" And she's like, "I want to see you fucking come on stage." <laughs> Something like, that. like Jesus Before Christ, these people, yeah. And he t- pretty much says, "I want to break up." Where he's like, "I you I need you, a dom who's dominating, and you suck." It's been shown you don't run shit, so yeah, I need a dom who dominates. So this is done. And she somehow fucking f- finds a way. The actress finds a way to because, show that she's losing more hair. Because later in that episode, and then later in that episode, A Train shows up to her and says, "Fucking Sage knows I'm the leak." You need to fix this. And she's like, why do I need to fix it? I took one shit love, in his fucking lo- toilet. Yeah, I love her fucking reaction. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You just made me a fucking accomplice, dude. You fucking dick. He's going to kill us both. But then she's like, wait a second. I can take care of my problem and his. And that's what makes Ashley so smart. And I love and her character. Diabolical. Di- cause she, but see, now she is going diabolical. to. Diabolical. But it shows, yeah, her smarts of like, okay, I know how I can manipulate them. And you're also seeing Sage be okay with it. Because I think Sage knows that Homelander is going to kill her. 
I think Sage knows because he's too fucking dumb and egotistical and he's going to kill her. I believe, and she's putting things in place to stop him when that happens. I believe that Sage will ultimately be the downfall of Homelander. Yeah, because he's going to get too mad at her and kill her. I don't think he's going to kill her, but I think she I will think be. So. Okay. And I also think. You're entitled to your jackass opinion. But I think, I think no, I think you're right, too. I think, no, you're fine. I think no matter what. I got to give you shit. I think no matter. my ma- friend. I, I think no matter what, you're right. She will be his downfall because she's smarter than him, and he can't handle that. She's smarter than she's the smartest he, human she's on, the the smartest planet. on the planet. Right? She she. You know how like Homelander toys with people physically? She toys with people. She's mentally. doing the same thing because she likes to see how far the brain can go. And I love the fact that Firecracker in this episode is like, "Fuck you! You set me up to get my ass kicked." And she's like, "Yeah, maybe you shouldn't be fucking talking shit." I don't yeah. remember what she said. She said yeah. that line back to her that she yeah. said in the last episode of being like. Well, look what I can do. Look how easily I can fun- manipulate you people. So shut the fuck up, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, it's it's just interesting that Sage knows and is allowing him, which I love. I love that a lot because I do think that is her stacking. That is her being playing the fence and her stacking the deck and being like, I, I truly think at some point. She Actually, thinks- she's just trying to survive at this point. <laughs> No, I'm talking about uh, Sage. I'm oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, w- w- but both, yes, in a sense, both are just doing what they can to survive. But well, no, I think I, yeah. s- what Sage is doing with Ashley and A Train is, yeah, setting that position of like, I truly think that she like at the end of the day, I'm probably gonna get killed by one of them. But Homeland is probably gonna kill me first because she even says when they join up is like, I can't do this because I'm smarter than you and you will not handle it. Mm. But she still does it anyway because she wants to see how far she can take it, and um, it's gonna be I can't, it's gonna be an interesting thing because now we're seeing a lot of things in motion with this episode, and uh, uh, I think the 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 thing that interested me the most was seeing the whole Stan Victoria thing, and then Stan finding out about the kid mm-hmm. being soup turned soup and he was pissed about that and they had their whole conversation oh well fuck oh and then when they meet samir the the parent of the kid and then he just deflower my daughter she's like i was fucking 20 he didn't deflower me yeah (laughs) uh so yeah they got attacked by the sheep and they they lost all the virus and uh well they they had to inject that dead body with it no, but before that they find out that that's like that that's That's the last of the virus yeah yeah. Yeah. and they they have they just debate because Butcher's like, fuck it. Why don't we just inject fucking Victoria? Starlight basically tells him, like, you know, you're a fucking dick, which he is. Because yeah. at the end of the episode. Because he says, fuck it, inject Victoria and run away. No, yeah. at the end of the episode, what does he do to Samir? Oh, my God. Oh, so this is what I love. This is what I love about <sighs> this. So they have this this confrontation. And they're like, okay, so we all agree that we're going to inject the dead body with the virus because they find out how to transmit it. One of the funnier jokes that I just like, it's so dumb, but I love it, where they're like, how do you transmit it? Or how transmissible is it? It's like, well, blood, saliva, semen. In French, it goes, that man is in no shape to fuck those sheep. <laughs> Stan with uh, Gene Carlito Esposito, he's so great. He's just like, he meant they would eat him. And then he goes, oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, nobody was thinking that he was going to fuck the sheep. I was. <laughs> you know I was. <laughs> but, yeah, so they inject him, and then they take it, and then you just hear thunk, 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 thunk. So they start falling and dying as they're running well, away. Well, no, what, what it looked like to me is that something was pounding on the roof, so they leave. And then they start. But yeah, when they leave, they find out it's like, oh, it was the sheep, sheep just that starts were, barfing all over the place. It was the sheep that yeah, were landing on yeah. the fucking um, roof. But uh, so they get away. Yeah. As the sheep are all everybody dying. gets away. J- Stan Edgar gets taken back to where we he's don't supposed know where to be. She- Samir is right, but uh, and we don't know where Butcher Victoria is. Victoria blows up the head of the guy taking him back to prison, and so he's free. Yeah, Stan goes back to prison. He's like, why you you, you reneged on the deal? And he's like, well, uh, you didn't give us the virus, so you don't get a pardon. So that's the deal. And yeah, then as he's leaving, she explodes that dude's head and saves <laughs> him. Uh, because again, she's, they still have that relationship. He's, she remember, still has used him as a father. You, you remember know? You remember how you uh, had made that, uh, uh, you made the um, the thought you you had the idea that it was his mom was a figment of his imagination and whatnot with you you yeah. also had another uh character who you thought was a figment of your imag- oh that of, got confirmed i absolutely fucking agree 
that that final scene confirms that he so, is a figment so of what, Billy Butcher's So what happens is we get at the end of this, uh, and we'll we'll get and then we'll talk all about the Huey stuff. Yeah, um, and then we'll finish a, that. But, Jesus, um, how long have we been talking about this episode? <laughs> there's a lot of shit that happened in this episode. We haven't even got to the heck of that. So yeah, we find out that oh Samir, they show just a leg that's like all that was left. So it seems like oh the sheep must have got him or whatever. So she assumes he's dead, and that's why she saves Stan because she's you know emotionally distraught. Um, and then we get the end of the episode where it's actually uh, Samir is in a barn and he's got his leg wrapped up. And he's up pissed. And he's screaming naturally. and crying. He's like, get the fuck away from me. Get away from me. You fucking and we cut f- my fucking leg off. We find out it was Butcher. And Butcher is talking openly to Kessler as if Kessler is there. Yeah. But when Samir looks up, he looks up like someone like, who the fuck are you talking to? There's no one there. Like, his look isn't like this. I see this person. It's a look. There's nothing there. And I look back like, what are you talking about? And so that right there confirmed what I thought, that Becca was the angel, Kessler's the devil of his psyche. And I think... It's not explicitly stated at I, the end of the episode, but I think, I think Jake is right. That's I a think, confirmation. I, I'll even go further. I think... Oh, well, yeah. I think that <laughs> Kessler's this fucking tapeworm thing. I think Tesla's the, the Kessler's the thing that's the worm. Like, that's that thing is making him see Kessler. You know what I mean? Like, it's giving him negative... Like, I think it's manipulating his brain, is what I think. And he's just been listening to that more, and that's why he killed Ezekiel. And I still don't know how he did it. I would love to know how. <laughs> and then, yeah, they were like, how would you do it? He's like, I don't know. I blacked out. And then I just woke up, and everything was, yeah, so we'll find that out. But So anyway, the Huey set portion of this episode is heartbreaking. Um, surprisingly, I did not get as emotional as I thought I would. I did. Um that's just because I think Simon Pegg is no. It was a great scene. It was a gra- such it was his amazing. character. His whole the character of his dad is such a. He's one of those characters. He's one of those people that you know who's just like he just wants to fucking get through life without being without his heart being broken because he's and, not a bad person. And, he likes what he likes. And he's kind of a dork. Yeah. But who cares? He's not hurting anybody. He just wants to raise his kid, and his wife leaves him. So naturally, he. He does a fucking great job raising Huey on his own, you know, and, and yeah, Huey's kind of like, he's a little embarrassing because he, he kind of is, he's kind of dorky, you know, he likes, you know, James Patterson books. Sure, right, you know, but, but, but everybody, hey, hey, as a parent, I can tell you this much already, or, or I could tell you now, he's only two, so he thinks I'm cool, but <laughs> as he gets older, it's going to be the same. It's oh, like, yeah. I know that I'm dorky and weird and nerdy, just like my dad was, like, it's, it's, it's that's what happens when you're a dad, you're, you and you like i i think that it's a great um he raised a good a, a son great, that's a, enough for him I, to should be able to have some for sort me, of closure it, it's a, and a decent death it, i'm like, trying to think of a proper way to say this it's a tour de force for me mm. of simon pegg as a performer as an actor because uh or we see so much of him and like he's done dramatic things but like we've seen so much of him in comedies and see him play that that certain role or not you know like he's done different the moments, things the moments but this when is he, yeah. rarely do we get to see him um be funny but also be very dramatic in the same the moments when he scene. goes from uh i don't know what the fuck is going on to you left us yeah are fucking awesome so here's what's interesting and his death scene is one of the best i've seen so here's what well, I As find. He didn't know that he died. Yeah, I find Did interesting. You know yeah, about this um, storyline, because it's very similar to the storyline of God Country, but it's kind of in reverse. Because in that story, his dad has um, dementia, mm. and when he gets this magical sword, he or Alzheimer's. I'm sorry, Alzheimer's, and uh, when he gets the sword he can remember and he keeps the sword with him because he can remember and it's like this storyline is also like that but like in reverse it's just like flowers for Algernon story of okay Huey's dad is back he's talking and everything but every every person watching this show has a thought in their head when is this going to fall apart yeah because 
it's going too good. It's going too well that something. Well, the first crack is that he doesn't know that Huey just left the room. Yeah. Because she's talking to him and he's like, what? Where's Huey? He yeah. just went to the bathroom just now. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. And then. So you start to see it. And so while the compound V did bring him back, it is starting to fracture his memories and cause this extreme form of um, Alzheimer's or I, I don't know if it's dementia or Alzheimer's. I don't want to confuse the two. But there's a, he, he's losing his memory and he's regaining memories and it's going back and forth and he's slipping he, in and out of he it. He seems to believe that it's it's the year that Huey is, what, 12, I think, is what he keeps well, saying. We no, first, you're 12. When we first find out where he went, because they at the well, yeah. Huey comes back and they go looking his, for his mom was reading a book and she's like, I thought he was with you. Yeah. He's not in the room. So they go and look for him. And this, si- is, this is when I start. I'm sorry. No, but go, this, go on. this is when I start realizing that you might be wrong about this because up until this point yes, I still this, think this moment, yeah. I still think there's evidence that she's not real or whatever and I, I really liked the theory that you had about that sorry yeah uh, <clears throat> that and then the final scene for sure but uh, <laughs> yeah right yeah right. <laughs> no before that when she was feeding him and stuff I was like okay now it's not yeah because but anyway um, uh, <laughs> the when they find him, he's hunched over, and there's this dead body, and there's a hole in their cavity, and he's holding the heart. Yeah. And then he, like, freaks out because when they see him, he's like, what happened? What's going on? He starts to f- be his abilities. He can phase through the walls. So then he's running, and he's phasing through the walls, and this guy is talking to this nurse trying to pick her up, and then he runs to the wall and is in the middle of this person. Like yeah. standing in him and then so spinning around up. and the guts are falling out and he's moving and there's just like that. and it's like this is where the show uses go- how effectively the show uses gore for comedic purposes and then for dramatic purposes purposes because you're like oh my fucking god what is happening like you're just like what is and then it's so fucking you are freaked out with him because you're like, oh, my God, because you're thinking well, then when he, he can't control this. When he finally leaves, all the guts that he was holding up, it's like, just, just fall out. Fall, and and, and this just, poor girl yeah. is just watching yeah. this like, what the fuck? He's freaked out. She's screaming. Uh. There's their alarms and everything. And then, yeah, there's that moment where he's like, I have to get to the store because he wants a tech night doll. I mean, he says it's an action figure, but let's be honest, it's a doll. He's like, I'm Huey. He's like, you can't be Huey. Huey's 11. Yeah. And, yeah, You're so crying, then. you aren't you? No. It's no, okay, man. No, I was just clearing my throat. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, so, yeah, this episode ends with, um, or this storyline ends with them getting into a certain room and Huey putting together a cocktail. They finally calm him down they enough calm him down to tell him what's up. He convinces him that he is Huey and he's not 11. Be, I don't want to be Jar Jar. Yeah. Oh, fucking Christ. When he says you couldn't let go and you couldn't let Jar Jar die. Don't let and me what be happened? Jar Jar. And he, what happened? He died. He died exploding in my hands with bloody... <laughs> Blood and shit. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, he, he takes him to the room and he puts together a cocktail to kill him. Uh, to euthanize him. And um, he goes, are you sure you know how to do this? He's like, unfortunately, I have a friend who knows a lot about drugs. Yeah. Um, but uh, <clears throat> he's doing it, and they ha- they have their final goodbyes. But before that happens, the, how he snaps him out of it is when he says, uh, Tech Knight was never my hero. You were, or you are. And I, and I knew he was going to say that because I, I even said it when I was watching. I was like, you are. And then he says that because that's what I said to my dad. You know, it's just like, of course. And, then you had to and I hope one day my son says it about me. Whatever, you know. You're my hero. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I start crying. Um, I'll take over the show I now because he's just completely. He's a, he is a he's mess. He's a mess. He is goddamn sobbing like a little girl. It is. Which is exactly is. what I wanted. Now I'm taking over the show. I rule off peel off top here. Yeah. Um, wow, what a twist. <laughs> Thanks, M. Knight. Um, <laughs> Do you think his friends call him M. Knight? <laughs> Why wouldn't they just call him M? But they have to call him M. Knight. Yeah, but that's what people call him. Who's M&M? going to get confused if you say, oh, hey, M? Do you think they call him Knight? <sighs> Shyamalan? Hey, Sh- hey, Shyamalan. 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 Yes. Hey, Shyamalan. Hey, Shyamalan. Do you think they call him Shyamalan? So anyway, Simon Pegg's death was uh, very emotional. <laughs> Shama. 
Why are we laughing about it? But you know, I we're knew that. fucking terrible. We're laughing <laughs> about Salmon Pig, a national treasure in another country, who's just. I thought you were going to say national television. I'm like, chill out. On uh, national streaming television at various times and places. It's locally. You can nobody, only watch it. Actually, um, nobody. <laughs> Get my TV there is, guy. there is, I mean, there is appointment television still, but it's all sports. <laughs> yeah. Um, Congratulations, America. <laughs> sports and so, gambling. So, the ending is really fucking heartbreaking too, because yeah, he's saying his goodbyes, and he's like, "I'm scared," and he's like, y- "You don't be scared. I'm right here. I'm right here." And it's like, you know, that kind of shit, and watching that is like, man. I'm in a way I'm kind of thankful I didn't get have to it sucks I didn't get a final goodbye, but it's also like fuck man, I don't think I could have handled that. I yeah, you know? like I mean my mom is getting up there and I don't know It's gonna be um, it's gonna be rough when I my just, mom goes. <laughs> I know I know that I'm lucky enough that I get to spend a lot of time with her now. Yeah. Um and she's very lucid. She's not even close to being anything, you know what I mean? There's history or whatever, but I'm not really worried about that for her, I don't she, I don't think. She uh one time uh, we were having dinner and I was trying to pay for my meal and she insisted to pay for it. And she told me to shut the F up about it. And I was like, all right, you pay for my meal. Then. <laughs> you don't remember that? I told you that story. Oh, my, my mom? Your mom, yeah. I thought you were talking about your mom. No, and I'm like, no, it was, it was funny because your mom was giving me shit and she was just like, shut the, shut the F up. Yeah. Well, she. I like think I'm offering to pay for your meal. Shut up. I think because uh, I swear so much. I think when she gets around my friends, she's like, "I'm cool." Fuck. But she didn't say the f word. Oh, what'd she say? <laughs> she said f. She said, "Shut the f up." Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, my mom. I mean, my mom is is salty, and I'm like, I, hey, it's okay. I, I like you seeing can, her you get say salty that. in her old age because she's tell, just like she's like fuck you. You can tell anyway. me to shut the fuck up. And your I son hope, does it I all the that, time. I hope that I can do that when I'm that age and just be like fuck you, you know. But yeah, I mean, I'm just saying like we don't get to choose. In How many it, yeah. in many ways, Huey and his dad got to have that moment that everybody wants to have. I think. Right? We all want to die with the two people we love the most or whatever on our own terms, I guess. Well, Huey, this is what... And he got to. It was a nice, sweet sweet scene, but it was also like... How many people, all three of them got me, some cor- sort of closure? For me, though, for me, died. though, I didn't get that. And to see Huey cheat and steal his way to get that kind of... Ir- cheat and know- steal what? The v- he he got what he oh. wanted because he was he came to peace with his dad dying. Now, granted, he didn't give him the V, right? But he still had full intents to do that, right? Can I just say because that because he couldn't live with yeah. his failure, right? But I feel like this story would have gone so much better. I don't know. I mean, but what, at the same time, it gets it it gets what do, what do we time out time yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. time out Go. I will correct it Got right you. now because. I understand the perspective of how it's redeemed because he didn't give him the V. His mom did. No, no, yeah. So he did make that decision that I'm not going to go through with this. Right. And but she did. But so you're going to give us Simon Pegg's character being totally terrified for most of the show and then dying. However, you know I mean? however Huey got, in a, in a narrative standpoint... Huey, oh, and Frenchie turns himself into the cops for some fucking Huey, reason. Huey did the right thing, but he also he did the right thing, and then his mom did the right th- wrong thing. So then he had to do the right thing again. So in in, in a weird way, it kind of sums up the relationship with Huey. Made that decision like, no, it's just it's his time to go, and it's I've I I didn't get to say goodbye, but it is what it is, right? Yeah. His mom took that away from him because she thought that's what he wanted. But then he has to kill his own dad because his dad killed like three or four people, innocent people, because uh, because of the, the Jar Jar. The, you have to let go. You can't keep. And it's such, an, it's such a, I think, sad, beautiful story about loss of, mm. like you just said, we don't get a choice. And how unfair and frustrating it can be that's just the way it is and you have some to, things will never change <laughs> and, and you find and you know you know 
you know, how I relate to it, you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> you know what's going down. How I relate to it on that aspect of, yeah, that, that Jar Jar moment of, like, I, I can't judge Huey because maybe if I was in his position, I might have changed things and I would have done things differently to get my goodbyes. Sure. But, so I can't, you know, I'm human and he's human, so I understand that. But uh, when, when you, it, it's just my my perspective on it. It is, it is hard. I still deal with letting. Here's what I'm, I still deal with it to I'm, this day. Here's I, what I'm looking at right now, is that and, and I, I I I know what you're saying, but here's what I'm looking at. Last episode, he had given. No, he 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 had let what, go. That's what I mean. It's not his fault. It's his mom's because he decided not to do it. He would put it back in his pocket and said, "I'm not I doing." Know. I know, but I'm just saying, like, what are we? I'm not... I think I think the story would be better served, honestly, if his mom did turn out to be a hallucination. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. But, okay, so now she's back in the picture. Now Huey's dad's dead. Um, and Butcher's got some dude, like, tied up, which is just fucked up. And I understand Starlight her. Starlight can't use her powers for but, some reason. But the problem is, again, it just shows you that it, it's Stan not. Stan Edgar's free. It's not Huey's fault, though, because his mom said, you already lost one parent. I couldn't let you do that. And it's like, that's not the point. Sure. No, you can't. And I'll the, accept the story because I didn't write it. No, 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 but no. But I'm not a huge fan. No, that's what makes it good. It's, 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 it puts it on the mom again because it puts it on a, in a perspective of Huey understood that you shouldn't be playing God like this. Yeah, stop playing God. Or, you know, that phrase, whatever. But you shouldn't be playing the laws of nature of... of, of we're not playing God, uh, we're playing Monopoly. Of injecting your father with something unnatural like Compound V um, and, and, and turning and giving him a second chance of life, yeah, but then turning him into this killing machine, unbeknownst to him, because he's his brain is fractured and he doesn't his memories are colliding and he doesn't know where he is or what's going on. You know, it's it's a rough episode in that aspect. But I think it is a beautiful touch of like Huey at least getting a chance to say goodbye. And saying, like, I wish I would have, you know, and come to terms with the fact of that you always do when you lose someone. Yeah. There is that little, there's that moment, there's something that, and I just want to put my own little spin on this in perspective. But no, yes, it's natural, and I still feel that way sometimes. That um, unfairness, you know, and that anger. But then I also have that perspective of, like, I'm still grateful for the time I did have. You know what I mean? And I think that 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 helps a lot, but uh, I will tell you, it sucks, and it will get you when in ways that It'll you don't you. expect. It'll get you, just like herpes. Next so thing anyway. you know, you got a beer gut, and you can't do nothing about it. You, yeah. Um. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got uh, what is it? You got corns on your feet. Can't do nothing about Great it. Great episode. We like it. We like two thumbs up. We'll give it butts. <laughs> Off panel, off job, here with Jake and Tyler.